Hi everybody, it's Shelby. I'm here today to show you a couple new products that are being carried in the Simple Pleasure store. The first being the Ebosser, which is an electronic die cutting and embossing machine. It's made by Craftwell. It has a wonderful large cutting surface. This measures 8 by 12, so it easily will take cutting surfaces. As you can see here, an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of cardstock. It can easily take the grand caliber dies from Spellbinders. Here's the largest one of the circle. You can see that easily fits on there. It's easy to operate. It's super simple. It comes with wonderful instruction manual that shows you all the sandwiches that you would need to use with any of the dies on the market or that you may have in your supplies. The first thing I'm going to show you with the ebosser today is how to cut a thin die. The thin dies would be your memory box dies, your spell binders, your cherry lens. Those would be classifications of thin dies. When you're cutting a thin die with the ebosser, you're going to actually use all the plates that come with it. You've got your bottom white plate, which is your D. Then you have the shim, which is labeled the E then the heavy C plate, the B plate, and the A plate. So I'm going to show you how to cut a thin die. The other new wonderful product available at Simple Pleasures is the zipper die. This is made by Spellbinders under the Jillian Vance designs. And you can find this in the black, red, and white packaging. And this zipper die right here is perforated. It's about five and a half inches long. You don't have to use the whole entire length. Since it's perforated, you can use a third of it, two thirds of it. It's very, very versatile in terms of projects and how short or how long you would like this, this zipper to be. It also has some fantastic coordinating stamp sets that go with it. They are also available at Simple Pleasure. So here's an example. This is the inspirational zipper stamp set. This is the zipper icon. And this is the universal zipper. So all three of these stamp sets go wonderful with this zipper die. Checked out the Simple Pleasure's blog recently. You'll have seen that I've done a written tutorial on this gift card slash coffee holder. This is a wallet. I've done the inside with the tea and the coffee theme. And then on the outside I've hidden the gift cards behind this wonderful zipper die, which the recipient would pull off and I'll show you that in just a minute. What I'm going to show you is the front panel and how you um, would implement the zipper die. So here's my gift cards that I already have done on the front layering panel. I've put down my adhesive so I don't accidentally um, glue over top with um, my adhesive if I were to put it on the back side of what I'm covering it up with. So I'm going to cover up this and use the zipper die to create that opening. I already have my lines pre-marked where I want the top edge of the zipper die to go. And how I hold my dies in place is I use the Scotch removable tape. It comes in the blue. I think I go through that more than any other crafting supply. I'm a little awkward and tend to bump things, so when I'm putting something in the machine, I'm obviously always knocking my um, dies out of place, so I've learned to use this tape. So I'm going to take down the top edge of this die, cross the line that I've already drawn, which coordinates with the positioning of the gift cards. I'm going to put the die face up on top of the B plate. As you've noticed, the B and the C, or excuse me, the A and the B plates are very different um, in material. And some of the other machines that we use, the sandwiching plates are the same material as that heavy acrylic. This B plate with this machine is not the same as the A, so highly recommend putting the die face up. You create the sandwich, make sure everything is even, and you slide it on in and let the machine do the work. When you're using the 
this die, since it's perforated and you want it to tear from the tab bag, I would recommend taking the, the die off of the paper, pulling it forward so that it's not ripping the perforation. Another trick that I do when I'm using, in particular, a spellbinder die is to put wax paper in between the paper and the die. Sometimes I would classify, well, I would classify the spellbinders as, as a heavy, strong die in the sense that it really holds on to the paper really well, but that also makes it difficult to, at times, get the paper out of the die. So if you want to avoid that and you're running into the same issues, is to take a small piece of wax paper and put it between the die and the paper. So I'm going to do it on this one. Tape it down. Turn it back over so that the die is facing up. Make another sandwich. And I'm going to slide it on in. Still going to remove the die from back to front. I'm going to put this on top, seal it down. So there's how you create the front of the gift wallet and you would tear it and expose the gift card for the recipient. And there you have it. The next thing I'm going to show you with the ebosser is how to use a Sizzix type die. Um, these are your thicker dies. They have the black foam on top. The sandwich that you will use with the ebosser for the Sizzix die would be your C plate then the die, put the paper on top, again the black facing up, and then the A plate. Make sure everything is even when you put it in. The machine grabs it and it pulls it through. And I've used the Tim Holtz Gears die. As you can see, a nice perfect cut. Everything comes out beautifully. And there you have how to do the Sizzix die. The next thing I want to show you with the ebosser is how to do embossing. You want your D plate, your C plate on top of the D plate, your embossing folder with your paper inside. This embossing plate that I'm using is from Couture Creations, which you can also find at Simple Pleasures. This goes down on the C plate, then on top of the A plate, make, every, make sure everything is lined up. Slide it on through. And there you have some perfect, beautiful embossing. The very last thing I want to show you today with the ebosser is using a die that's very intricate, has lots of little pieces. This one happens to be from Cherry Lynn. And you can also find this in Simple Pleasures. If you've ever used these intricate dies, you can know, you have probably found out that getting the perfect cut on the first go around is, is and can be somewhat difficult. With what I found with this ebosser is that I have gotten a perfect cut on the very first pass. So I'm going to show you that. Again, with thin dies, you're going to use your D plate, then the shim, which is labeled the E, your C plate, your B plate, your die with the paper on. Again, you can see that I've taped these edges, and the reason being, again, if I do have to run it through a second time, I want it in the exact spot. I don't want to try to fit it back into the grooves. I've found with myself, I don't often do that very well, and I've ruined the whole cut, and I have to start all over. So the die is going to go facing up. Then your A plate. 
and then slide it through. Again, making sure everything is even. And here we have it cut through. I'm going to take my quilling pen and you can see it's ready to be poked out. Nothing sticking, nothing holding. See how easily that popped out? I'm going to run, run it through a second time to show you if you're using one of these intricate dies and you're having a very difficult time finding, finding out why you can't get it to go perfectly, what I would recommend doing is finding a different spot on your cutting surface. What happens is over time your plates get warped so there's unequal pressure when you're running it through the machine. So you want to just move the die around and find different areas than you ran it through in the first time, trying to find that pressure that'll help the die cut through the paper like you want it to. So you see I've moved it up. You can angle a little bit any way that might get you a cut. Again, I'm going to slide it through. And you can see with the e-bosser, the second time through, perfect. I didn't have to poke. I didn't have to work to get anything out. Even though with the first pass with the e-bosser, everything had come out. I just would have had to tap it. But I wanted to show you what to do if you're finding on your machine you're having difficulty getting a cut without running it through and through and through and through. So there you have the e-bosser, all the different ways to use it and the fantastic wonderful zip die. Thank you for bearing with me and I hope everyone has a fabulous day. Thanks!